welcome you all. Thank you for coming out with us this evening. Um, we know that you guys are tired and ready for a break, <laughs> um, but we are um, happy to meet with you tonight and discuss where we are headed for quarter three. Uh, my name is Tony Shipley. I'm a coordinator for the RLA department, and I am joined by my fearless colleague. Hello, I am Vanessa Oliver. I'm also a middle school coordinator alongside Tony. Thank you guys for being here. So we're going to ground our um, presentation tonight in the what and the how of DISD. As you guys know, we believe that we should be acutely focused on effective instruction, equitable access and outcomes, and continual improvement towards excellence. Um, the four strategies that will guide us <clears throat> on our path to student achievement, okay, so our plan to um, actualize our beliefs is through instructional delivery and design, strategic staffing, and of course, equitable distribution of resources. In addition, these three, these things will create a sense of belonging to all of our students. Um, we belong to the academic services team and we are positioned to, <clears throat> excuse me, influence <clears throat> the instructional delivery and design. Okay, and we do that through three main levers, student experience, content, and pedagogy. So those are the three things that we're gonna focus on tonight in this QCT. As you guys know, in Dallas ISD, all means all. So that means that tier one instruction represents high quality district approved curriculum teaching strategies and materials that will benefit all learners, no matter if they are emergent bilingual, special education, gifted and talented or what have you. Um, we know that we can scaffold tier one in order to address the diverse needs in, within our regular classrooms. Um, we can promote academic access, uh, sorry, promote academic success for students with varying abilities and also cultivate a sense of belonging. So we ensure inclusivity to tier one instruction because all Dallas ISD students get the good stuff. All right, so here's our agenda for today's QCT. Of course, we will preview quarter three as this is quarterly content training. We'll also do some pre-writing for the upcoming ECRs in our grade level units. Finally, we'll go over some updates to assessments and flex days before closing out with a reminder of some of the resources that may be of help to you guys. Okay, so today we are learning how to effectively plan instruction for quarter three. Our success criteria will follow the agenda that we just looked at. Can someone come off mute and read for me success criteria one? I can identify key learning in an upcoming unit. Thank you, success criteria two. I can prepare for ACR instruction by unpacking the prompt using the four T's chart. Great. And the last one. I can update my assessment and flex day practices. Perfect. Thank you guys for reading those. Okay. So that is our outline for the day or for the afternoon. Okay. Without further ado, let's jump into quarter three and identify some key learning. Okay, so when we look at quarter three, our students in middle school are taking a world tour. They're going all over the world and throughout all different time periods. So what I thought we could do this evening is um, kind of think of ourselves as, as little Doctor Who's and we're gonna be traveling throughout the world and throughout time in order to um, prepare for our quarter three. So let's take a look at where all we're going. Sixth grade, um, unit D is going to head to Greece and learn about Greek myths. Sixth grade unit E is headed to Mexico and they're going to read a novel and have a novel study of Summer of Mariposas. Seventh grade unit D um, takes us to um, the Northeast of America where we'll be learning Poe and his plays and poems and short stories. And seventh grade will also visit Mexico um, as they study the Frida, Frida and Diego collection. Eighth grade unit D has us in Italy where we study Romeo and Juliet. And eighth grade unit E has us also in Europe back in Germany to um, study the Holocaust with memory and meaning. 
So if any of you are Doctor Who fans, you know he travels around in this blue thing that looks like a phone bo booth. And so this thing is called a TARDIS. So what we're going to do tonight is get in our TARDIS and we're going to travel um, to these different times and places. Okay, so let's see where we're headed first. And we are in Greece. That means we're going to look at sixth grade unit D. Let's take a look at what's happening. What attractions will we see in unit D? So right here on the screen, what I have is the unit D at a glance, unit at a glance that's available in the Amplify program guide. This basically just gives me kind of a snapshot of what I'll be teaching within this unit about Greece. So it looks like, first of all, I'm going to be reading some Greek myths, including Prometh Prometheus, the Odyssey, and Arachne. Um, I'm also going to be using one of those quest features. Um, and when I do that, I'm going to be meeting the gods and characters of Greek mythology. Um, I'm going to learn about Greek drama and act out some scenes. And ooh, I even get to reimagine a Greek myth. I'm guessing that probably means I get to rewrite one. And that taps into my creativity, so I like that. It looks like the big idea of this unit is humans versus gods in ancient Greece. And I can see that all of the reading and writing is going to be centered around that theme. So I'm excited. This sounds like it's going to be a great trip. So let's take a look again at our unit unpacking protocol. We know that step one is to under understand the big picture of the unit. Um, this is where we focus our attention during this QCT. We're going to be annotating the unit overviews for our upcoming units, paying special attention to the key learning in each subunit. Here's an example of an annotated unit overview for unit 6D, so this unit about the Greeks. This is something that I learned from an Amplify coach um, they told me to think of the writing prompts of each unit as sort of like the essential question of the unit or the big idea of the unit. And so as you can see here, they are in sixth grade writing about um, the theme of human pride and how those are that theme is developed in Greek myths. So I can think of this as the essential question or the big idea of that unit. And so I labeled it as such. Because now that I know this, before I go into teaching my lessons, I can center my, a lot of my conversations around that, that topic. We did All have right. some noticings, um, Tony, if you okay. go back. The main, uh, Melissa said the main focus of the unit was annotated as well as the key words. And then Emma said, I noticed the language of the standards or the teaks written on the sides. Some good noticings. Those are great noticings. Yes. I know um, Amplify is so content based that sometimes I think we're like, well, what skills am I teaching? Right. And so that's one of the reasons I like to write those along the sem or the, the margins is just so that I can know kind of what is my skill, um, what skills lessons am I going to need to review and leverage with my students? Thank you. Great, great noticing. Okay, so now I've traveled in my TARDIS to ancient Greece. I've unpacked one of my suitcases, which is the unit overview. And now I want to write a postcard to someone to let them know how excited I am to be here and what I plan on doing while I'm here. Hmm, let's see. You know, sometimes my administrators like to stop by to visit um, my classroom. So I think I'm going to write an, a postcard to my administrator. So I have written this to Miss Oliva. In real life, Miss Oliva was one of the best APs I ever had. She was hard as nails, but she grew me. I will tell you, I became a better teacher because of her very honest feedback. So I thought, well, I'll write to Miss Oliva and let her know what I'm doing in this unit. So can I have a volunteer come off mute and read that for us out loud? I'm in ancient Greek to study the myths that explore the complex world of Olympian gods and mortal men. My class will read Prometheus, the Odyssey, and Arachne. I don't know how to say that. Arachne. Arachne. Okay, which I think they will love. We'll fold in skills such as characterization, point of view, and theme. In fact, my class will write an informational essay about the theme of human pride. 
I'm most excited to introduce my sixth graders to the drama genre, which has its origins in ancient Greek. If you get a chance, come visit. It's enlightening here. Sincerely, Miss Shipley. Thank you, Ms. Ayers. I appreciate that. So notice that um, in this short little postcard, all I've done is pull, pulled out some key learning, some things that I know, you know, like the kind of big chunks that I'll be teaching in the unit. And also I added something that I'm excited to teach um, just because that gets me excited to teach my unit, right? When I think about that. So what we're going to do now, well, I will turn this over to Vanessa. All right, so let's get in our TARDIS to see what place and time period you'll be transported to for quarter three. All right, so it looks like seventh grade is traveling to Baltimore, the Baltimore area in the early 1800s. Your, de your destination is the works of Edgar Allan Poe. Eighth grade is headed to 1600s Verona, Italy, with the study of Shakespeare, specifically Romeo and Juliet. And sixth grade, we've already visited Greece with the Greeks, so it looks like the TARDIS is taking you to... Mexico, where your main attraction is a novel study of Summer of the Mariposas in Unit E. So we've given a lot of, um, we've done a lot of modeling and a lot of intro to 6D, which is the Greeks, and we're using it throughout this QCT. So the work that you'll do will be for 6E. If you're a sixth grade teacher, it'll be for 6E, not 6D. Okay, um, so we are excited. Next, you're going to study your itinerary. These unit at a glance pages are linked on your digital workbook. On the second slide of your digital workbook, you'll see your unit overview for your upcoming unit, like the one here on the screen. As you can see here, I highlighted the connection that this unit makes between some of the Mariposas and the Odyssey. The Odyssey was read in 6D with the Greeks. Okay. I also wrote a note to myself in a text box so that I remember to reach back to that prior learning when we were teaching the hero's journey in that unit. Remember, when we annotate, we're looking for the information on these post-its. Why is it important? How does the unit reinforce prior learning? What is the formal writing piece? And what are some key takeaways from each subunit? Okay, so remember those, that's how we guide our uh, thinking. So now that you were able to kind of look over your unit overview and annotate, you know the gist of your upcoming unit, you're going to write a quick postcard, just like Tony did earlier, a quick postcard to your administrator about key learning of this unit. In addition, include something you're most excited to teach. Your postcards are found in your digital workbook directly after the unit overview you just annotated. Okay, I hope that this activity kind of helps you synthesize um, some things that you can look forward to to your next unit. Um, now, tomorrow, when your neighbor teacher comes and says, what did I miss at QCT? Um, you can um, let them know, or your administrator, let them know what you'll be teaching um, after Christmas break. Okay, we're off to a strong start in that unpacking protocol, uh, but just remember that there are three more suitcases, so to speak, that you'll need to unpack um, suitcases meaning steps, um, <clears throat> prior to teaching um, the unit. So just remember that step two <clears throat> is where you'll analyze your teaks. I'm sure you guys remember this T chart where we compared the frequently taught teaks with the assessed um, teaks. Want to, you'll want to go ahead and still do this teaks analysis for your unit. Um, this is also where you will unpack the assessment and even um, take the assessment either individually or with your PLC. We just want to remind you guys that we have created blueprints for those assessments that are available now. Um, this um, assessment blueprints folder is actually linked on your um, digital workbook and so that you can easily access that. It's always on Curriculum Central, but we've also put it there for you this evening. So the Unit D assessment blueprints are available now. As a side note, the assessments will be in All in Learning by December 13th. So very soon, but just not yet. Um, but if you would like to go ahead and start looking at that assessment, kind of wrapping your head around it, remember our unit assessments and Amplify, I mean, in All in Learning are the Amplify unit assessments, just shortened and some of the questions edited to be more star aligned. So um, if you'd like to kind of know the content of that before December 13th, you're welcome to look at it in Amplify. So this, like I said, this blueprint and also a, an Amplify assessments timeline calendar 
is also linked on your um, digital participants guide, should you want to look a little more closely at that. Okay, um, uh, again, part of your next steps will also include going through each of the lessons to examine the arc of learning. This is where you'll kind of weigh those um, lessons and decide if there's any necessary prioritization that you'll need to do for your campus. And of course, step four is when you'll begin to make your preparations in regards to the materials needed for the unit. Um, because we're limited on time, um, and also because you may not be here with your entire PLC, um, we will leave you to do steps two and two through four at another time. But we hope that what we've done here today has got you thinking about where your instruction is headed right after winter break. Now we're gonna take a little deeper dive into the unit and look at our writing pieces using the ECR, um, using a 14s chart to unpack the ECR. All right, so let's take a little deeper dive into the unit and prepare to teach the ECR using the 4Ts chart. Okay, so when we're thinking of how students should utilize the 4Ts graphic organizer, we wanna think about the four parts to unpacking an ECR prompt. First, we wanna focus on the task or simply what is the mode of writing and what is the topic, okay? Is the mode to explain, to argue in an essay or correspondence, okay? What are they actually writing about? What is the topic, okay? Next, we want students to think about what pieces of the prompt come from the text to use as their text evidence, okay? So looking at the prompt and then going through and sifting through the text, what are those pieces? Under the thoughts column, we want students to make inferences about the topic and the text that they found in the previous columns. So based on what they've already found on the task part and on the text part, what inferences can they make? Okay, this is where they put their notes under the thoughts column. Finally, at the bottom, you see they will create a thesis or a central idea statement. They can use the prompt to frame this statement and include information from the other previous sections, okay? So let's unpack this prompt by looking at the task first. The prompt says, write an essay in which you argue whether or not humans were destroyed by their pride. Remember, this comes from 6D, the Greeks, okay? It's all about the Greeks. We can see that the mode of writing is argumentative because it simply asks them to argue. However, the prompt might not always say argue, even though they want them to write an argumentative essay. Okay, it might be worded differently. By using this process, however, students should be able to better understand what type of essay it is that they will be writing. Thinking about the topic, students will need to understand what humans did with their pride to be able to argue one way or the other. Okay, they're going to need to make a claim about their argument, which they will support with textual evidence. Under the text section, we know that they're responding to Prometheus and the Cyclops from this unit. Okay, thinking about this topic, I remember reading about the part where Odysseus tells the Cyclops that he needs to tell people that Odysseus was the one that caused his blindness of his one eye. Okay, so in the story, Odysseus and his men stabbed the Cyclops. Okay, so now he's telling the Cyclops, make sure you tell him it was me. Okay, I remember that. I remember it also says, quote, Cyclops, if anyone ever asks you how you came by your blindness, tell him your eye was put out by Odysseus. That supports that thought. I also remember how the text describes what Zeus sees. It says, Zeus saw woodsmen's huts, farmhouses, villages, wild towns, even a castle or two. He saw men cooking their food, carrying torches to light their way at night. Okay, that comes directly from the text. And the warning that Prometheus gave to the humans when he delivered the fire, it says, quote, handle it carefully. It can change your whole life. Okay, so the, this was my text evidence for my text column. Okay, under the thoughts column, I noted how the pride they felt by escaping the beast did not destroy these men, but gave them the opportunity to celebrate after outsmarting the Cyclops. I also noted the humans in this myth were proud of what they could do with fire even though they didn't want it at first. Then at the bottom, I put my thesis. I decided that the humans were not destroyed by their pride. My thesis states, neither Odysseus from the Odyssey nor the humans in Evslin's Prometheus were destroyed by their pride, regardless of the, of the overabundance they had in themselves. Okay, so as you can see, having students unpack the prompt using the 4Ts chart 
can help them set up their writing and ensure they are including all the necessary pieces to fully create um, a response that directly answers the prompt. Okay, because we've seen that, you know, based on the data, the students were not understanding that prompt from last year's STAR. Okay, so our first step is to make sure they understand the prompt. Okay, so some teachers might have students decide which side to argue before they begin this process, which is totally fine. As the students collect their evidence and thoughts and notes and, and things like that, they might change their argument, and that's okay too. The important thing is, is that they write their final argumentative essay arguing only one side, okay, because that's what the rubric states. They have to pick a side. Even if they can see both, they have to pick one side, okay? And that's the 4T's chart. In your digital workbooks, you will notice that we have included the 4T's, um, a 4T's graphic organizer like Vanessa just unpacked for us um, for the writing um, ECR prompt that will come up in this um, upcoming unit. I would strongly suggest doing it before doing it with your students um, just to feel comfortable with it and knowing how it can help support your um, teaching of the ECR. Um, but what we've also included within that digital um, workbook is an exemplar of that essay. Okay, so it's the same prompt. It's just we've written the essays and they're in the curriculum. Now we know that ECRs are, there's a range of how they're looking and how they're being turned in. Um, but however they look, they should still have text evidence. They should still have commentary. They should still have a thesis and they should have addressed the task appropriately. So um, this is something that we hope that you could turn around and use within your classroom as well. Okay, so here is a video recording modeling the unpacking of the extended constructive response using the 4T's chart for unit 6A. So if this is something you guys could share with your PLCs, y'all could, um, I mean, however you wanna use this, it is for you to use. Um, again, we used the ECR from the Roll Doll unit, unit 6A. Um, so it's you're more than welcome to use it. It's also linked in your digital notebook. Also, um, your SILT teams, did you say this about the SILT team? Oh, no, I didn't say that. Okay. Go ahead. Your SILT teams have also received this video, and so they may, you may also see that they'll pro provide some training around this. They may or may not. You know. All right. And if you find that your students need help with the evidence portion of ECR, check out our PLC package for effective and sufficient evidence in ECRs. Okay, it'll provide an overview of the ECR, full calibration and student samples. This PLC package will go more in depth and even provide some teaching strategies that can that you can use in your classroom to help students with their, um, their evidence portion. Okay, you can register for this in Cornerstone. It's a RISE session, so it's self-paced, completely individual or with your PLC. All right, so let's get into the updates for assessments and flex days. Okay, you guys, we are happy to announce that from now on, um, each assessment day on the IPC will be followed by a flex day. Um, this means that you have extra time to complete the assessment if necessary. Um, if not, you may decide to use the best use of this time to review or extend Amplify content. Um, but we made this change based on a lot of feedback from several teachers at several different campuses. So we hope that this works for you, okay? So from now on, you will find a flex day after the assessment day that can be used as day two of the assessment, okay? Um, now, there's no right or wrong way to use the two days if you need it, um, but I'm just going to add a little teacher tip here. If it were me, um, I might wanna do the ECR on the first day so that while they're taking the reading portion on the second day, I can grade the ECRs while they're working or at least get started on that. So um, of course you don't have to use that model. That's just maybe what I would do, you know, a time-saving trick, but um, you have those two days now. So if you do need them and you wanna you know, provide that extra time for students, um, you have that to do so. Okay, so also beginning with the unit three assessment, which is, 6C, 7C, 8C. A printed version of the test will also be available in All in Learning. Uh, this can be used as an accommodation uh, for backup or for just teacher preparation. Right now, All in Learning does allow you to print the test. However, it prints 
we have found that it prints the passage for each question as well. So you still have to go in and like take out all the passages for the questions and it's, it's kind of a mess. So we have uh, provided a printable version for you guys. Um, it's in All in Learning under the assets part um, with the exemplars and the rubrics. If you, if you can see right there, it says 60, the Greeks reading assessment printable. And then the assessment is there as well. I have not linked the exemplars and the rubrics, but I will do that. I just remember. <laughs> okay, so they, those will be available though um, on December, Tony, do you remember when? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is there, so is there a reason why we're using all in learning instead of School City? Because my students, when you have to do it over two days, I've lost the kids lost stuff um oof. I don't know I can't answer the question about um why we're using all in learning those decisions are made you know up there but um I will say if you lost um data that is concerning I would reach out to the to all in learning using their like oh yeah I have they don't even know how it happens they don't know <laughs> that's what they said oh yeah they it's they're like it's not there this one kid had to redo everything because I know that I have I have asked that question a couple of times and um they told me they're telling me that as long as the student has not submitted it that they can go back and continue nope. the test that's what they nope. tell and I'm and I tell them the same thing I'm like well it's nope. something's not working nope <sighs> Well, maybe okay. that's where you write down their version. answers and then turn them in so they don't lose it. Yes. You just kind of have to yeah. work around the system. I learned that. I did that the second time because like we're not putting it in first because I trusted everything the first time and I had yeah. Yeah, people I know. lost their essays and this that's and that. That's so frustrating. So. I understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we had to yeah. rewrite things. So it's right. like, and we're going to write it ourselves. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we apologize for that. that. Uh, maybe this is where the printable version will come in handy. I mm -hmm. don't know. I mean, I know you probably don't want to print all those for all your students, but it could be used as a backup if that glitch is not fixed. But we can also bring it to their attention again and mm -hmm. just try to figure it out. Like, yep. I don't know. Um, you guys, I know that we're at time right now. Um, Vanessa and I just have a couple of more um updates to announce, and then we're done. But if you do have to leave, we understand. But we're gonna keep um, giving some updates. They're very short and, and sweet, um, but we will do that pretty quickly here. Yeah. So just again, if you're giving the print version, just make sure that the students still put their answers into all in learning. That, that's all we wanted to say about that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, also you guys, there have been a lot of questions about when will the test be activated. Our general rule, our protocol will be to activate those tests at the beginning of the week in which they are scheduled on the IPC. Um, so for example, here on the sixth grade assessment um, that's coming up, it's on a Wednesday, we would normally, we would activate that on the Monday um, of that week so that, you know, if teachers are a little bit ahead or whatever, we could accommodate that. However, due to request, because some campuses have chosen to give an ACP, um, for this 6C assessment, we will be activating it on Monday, December 11th um, for the uh, the week of before this because um, some teachers have to give this in addition to an ACP. Um, and so we're doing that to accommodate. But normally it will be the Monday of the week that it's scheduled. Um, also, if you're using this assessment as the ACP, which I know some campuses are, we don't recommend doing it early, okay? We recommend still giving it within the ACP week. That was a concern that came up today as well. Okay, uh, beginning in quarter three, the IPCs will include two weekly formative assessments, also known as WFAs, okay? These WFAs will be noted with this green and black icon you see here. They will usually come from an exit ticket or question in the Amplify lesson. It could be a multiple choice question, short constructed response, or any other item type. Okay, these will eventually be linked on the IPC directly to All in Learning so that we can get the data from those questions. Okay. 
Okay, and then um, we have also, as you guys know, we have, when Amplify gives you a flex day, we give you a flex day on the um, IPC, and we know that those are about one per week. There has been confusion about how those flex days should be used. So when thinking about how they should be utilized, we want to make sure that they're um, what we know what they are for and what they aren't for. Okay, so we, the green box here on the screen shows what they are for. Um, this could be to work on any kind of focus skill learning that students need, you know, some refreshers on. Um, it could be used for grammar, fluency, writing, or even to catch up if you're behind. It can also be a time to provide an opportunity for students to cr um, creatively showcase their, their um, learning, um, you know, sort of extend the content in some way. But Flexi should not be used for test prep, note taking, or additional resources outside of what is provided in, in um, Amplify, okay? Um, we also do not want this day to be solely to focus on tier two materials, okay? We are so dedicated to the tier one experience we're not forgetting about tier two. We do understand its importance, but we also want to make sure it's being used in a very focused and um, intentional way and not just given to every student. So um, those um, now tier two can definitely be wrapped into a flex day, but, you know, for intentional groups, not for the whole class. Um, before you move on back to the you mentioned slide before that the W something or something. Uh -huh. Front of um, Are you only going to ask those in the the star? There's you know lessons that are starred. No, I'm trying to think. Well, they, no, I don't. They should be for the simple fact right. is if right because um, of with block or you're using that as your as the pacing you won't yeah, even have that, that lesson mm -hmm. um i did think about this when i was putting them on mm -hmm. there i think in a lot of cases they are um because right. i was thinking about that um there may be some cases in which i didn't because there are two per week um there may have been some um some where both of them are not from the star lessons and my thinking was, um, you know, just when you meet less time, you create less data. I mean, bottom line, you know, and so we didn't want those students to be assessing every single time, like whether it's informal or whatever like this. But um, so that was one of my reasons I did think about it, though. And I, I think for I finished seventh grade, I haven't finished eighth grade WFAs, but um, I will think about that going forward. If not, just. You know, I think there's there should be at least like one per week where we um, did that. I can take a double check, but I will double yeah, check it, as to well. Me, I mean, it doesn't make sense if you're not teaching it, but then you're going to go in just for that one thing. No, I would skip it. I would. I mean, that's me. Um, okay. if I, I didn't know how married we are to to those. Yeah, we're not sure either because it's such a new request and. Um, so we're still learning ourselves, but I would think if you're not needing as many times, you wouldn't assess as many times. That's kind of what I was thinking. I mean, because you do the, your exit ticket and such in the lesson. So. Right. That's true. Okay. We'll go back and double check that um, and we'll kind of get some clarification around that as well. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. A couple more announcements, everybody. Also available are... Okay, um, this is our reading language arts newsletter. We brought it back. So you should be getting emails with these links. We'll continue to do that. Um, this is the one from week, um, the week of November 10th. It has uh, pictures of students experiencing Amplify curriculum updates. Um, it announces some upcoming professional learning opportunities, reminders, events, assessment info, all different sorts of um, news so make sure you check those out when you get those in your email and then remember amplify makes videos that are helpful when you're unpacking a unit those are housed here go ahead and you can feel free to check those out a link to this padlet is available in curriculum central and it's also linked in your digital workbook Remember, we offer office hours every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon, usually an Amplify coach is there with us. Uh, you register in Cornerstone to get credit, and we are there, middle school, we are there from 4 to 5.30.
And that is all we have for you guys. 